Okay, guys, 2.8, second video. So let's start with an example. Given f of x equals x plus one and g of x equals x squared, find the following, okay? So sometimes we don't want just the new function. Sometimes we want a specific value. And there's different ways you can do this. So f minus g of two would be f of two minus g of two. So that's pretty simple. That would just be two plus one. That's what f of two is right here, if I plug it in. Minus two squared, that's your g of two. So that's gonna be three minus four, which equals negative one. Alternatively, I could have said, well, I know f minus g of x is x plus one minus x squared. Then I could do f minus g of two and say, oh yeah, that's two plus one minus two squared, and we can still get negative one. So either way is fine. How about if I look at f times g of two? Okay, well f times g of two is gonna be f of two times g of two. f of two times g of two is going to be three, times four, which will then be 12. Okay. So let's go down, sometimes you can have a graphical representation. So this is a graphical representation of what we were just doing. Sometimes they won't give you the functions and you have to go based on the graph. In this case, I did stick with the same functions, but let's look at this, f plus g of zero. So let's pretend we don't know what f and g are and we just have the graphs, okay? So that's f of zero plus g of zero, which is going to be, let's see, f is the blue one, so f of zero is one. g of zero, it looks like is zero, so it looks like that composition is just one. What about f over g of negative one? Well, at negative one, let's see, f of negative one over g of negative one, so what is f of negative one? If I look at f, f of negative one, it looks like it's zero. g of negative one looks like it's one. So I guess that whole composition is zero. So you might have some problems where you have to look at the graphs and you might not even know f of x and g of x, but that's fine as long as you know what's going on. The last type of composition I wanna look at for 2.8 is called the difference quotient. And it's very important in calculus, okay? What it basically does is this helps us find the, um, the rate of change uh, when the difference between the two x-coordinates is h and the difference between the y-coordinates is this difference, f of x plus h minus f of x. And the idea is when h is very, very, very small, this gives you an instantaneous rate of change rather than the usual just average rate of change, okay? So if you do take calculus, you'll be doing a lot of these. So let's start with this. Let f of x equal 2x squared minus 3x. Find and simplify the difference quotient. So essentially what I want to do is I want to find all these pieces and simplify. Okay. So let's start with this. What is f of x plus h? That's the first thing I want to know. Well, in our case, that's 2 times x plus h squared minus 3 times x plus h. See where I got that. Here's my f of x. I just made f of x plus h. Now I'm going to simplify that. So I'll expand it. x plus h, x plus h, minus 3x, minus 3h. And we're getting this. 2 times x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus 3x minus 3h. So it's a little algebra heavy, but it's not hard algebra. So we get 2x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared minus 3x minus 3h. And finally, I'll combine any like terms. Uh, it looks like I don't really have any like terms, so that's fine. So you're saying, oh man, you just did that big f of x plus h. Well, we know what f of x is. That's right here. And h is just h. So now I can fill everything in. f of x plus h. minus 3x minus 3h, 
minus f of x. So if I want to subtract f of x, that's minus 2x squared plus 3x, right? Because we're subtracting the whole thing off. And then finally, all over h. And here's what I want you to notice. Positive 2x squared, negative 2x squared, negative 3x, positive 3x. So things are simplifying. That's going to leave me with 4xh minus 2h squared minus 3h all over h. Now, if you want to fully simplify this, what could you do to the top? You could pull out an h. So this is h times 4x minus 2h minus 3 all over h. Now that I've got an h factored out, now I can go ahead and I can cancel. So I'm just left with... 4x minus 2h minus 3. So that right there is that difference quotient. So there's some algebra, but it's really not that bad. Let's look at another one. Let f of x equal 2 over x, find and simplify the difference quotient. So once again, difference quotient is, and I will give this to you on the test, by the way, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So the big battle is finding out what f of x plus h is. Okay. Well, f of x plus h is just 2 over x plus h. I just go to my f of x. I replace the x with any x plus h's. Well, let's fill it in. Let's see what we can do. So f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Well, how do I simplify that? Well, usually when we have a complex fraction like this, we try to get both the top and bottom into a single fraction. So that's what I'm going to do on top by multiplying here by an x over x and multiplying here by an x plus h over x plus h. Essentially, what I'm doing is I'm going to have them have a common denominator, right? Once I do that, I got 2x minus 2 times x plus h all over x times x plus h. And then, of course, everything is over h. I can combine them into a single fraction since they have the same denominators. Now I'll distribute. So I'll get 2x minus 2x minus 2h all over x times x plus h all over h. Let's go down here. Let's simplify a few things. So if I continue on, my 2x is here. Cancel. And I'm just left with negative 2h over x times x plus h. Now instead of dividing everything by h, I could multiply by the reciprocal. So that's gonna leave me with negative 2h over x times x plus h times h, and I'm seeing that I can cancel h's. So all in all, the difference quotient is negative two over x times x plus h, and that, is what we're looking for right there.